there we go. We're up and running. Uh, so we know audio is working in this time. <laughs> so we'll, we'll jump straight in, I think. Um, uh, welcome back, those who are still sticking with us. Uh, so, hello, and welcome to the weekly Hood Uni Gamescast, coming to you from our home offices again, although you may notice that there's one of uh, John appears to be not in his home office. So uh, my name is Duke, and I'm joined by uh, my colleague, Matt, who you've seen every week, I think, or most weeks. And then uh, we have a fantastic change. We're joined by uh, three guys from Torchbearer. So we've got John and Pete, who are founders of uh, Torchbearer. And then we've got Matt, who is one of, our, one of our grads and now works with Torchbearer. So uh, let's roll the intro, and then we'll have a little chat. Cool. Okay, so uh, Matt, do you want to tell us a little bit why we're here, and then we'll we'll chat to talk. Yeah, about yeah. So, um, Flux Eight. Just for a little bit of background uh, information, Flux Eight was one of the games developed in Canal Flight Studios uh, a few years ago, um, and it was it went out onto Steam and did pretty well. It was in things like the Yogcast uh, Jingle Jam bundle and things like that. Um, and it's a great little game. Um, and then um, Torchbearer, we uh, uh, Matt, who was one of the uh, original developers, one of the programmers on the on the on the game, uh, went over to Torchbearer and we decided that we would work with them in porting the game from Steam over to the Nintendo Switch as it was sort of felt like an ideal place for it. So part of uh, the process, which we're gonna discuss today, and we're gonna have a, a quick chat with the developers is some of the difficulties of taking a game that was uh, originally programmed for PC and taking that and converting it so it runs on, on the Nintendo Switch. Um, and we might actually talk so because we've got Matt, who was one of the original developers, we might talk a little bit about the original development cycle as well and some of the difficulties there. Yeah. So we've got, uh, we've got a little intro slide and then we're, we've got a little Torchbearer slide. So Pete and John, do you want to tell us a little bit about Torchbearer and uh, where it comes from or how, how, it, how it came about? Yeah, absolutely. So as uh, Matt mentioned, myself and John founded Torchbearer. Uh, so as some may know, whilst we were still attending Huddersfield University, we were graduates ourselves. And uh, we did that on our placement year in the Enterprise Placement Scheme, uh, which is another fantastic way to spend your placement year, as the guys were chatting about earlier. Uh, so we found a Torchbearer then um, as a games company, uh, only a games company, and had some success through Creative England on our own, own title for, for a prototype grant. Uh, we continued the company through our, our final year, uh, just about managing to juggle both at the same time and uh, it takes us to where we are today, uh, nearly four years on. Uh, we primarily develop mobile applications and web applications today, but still keeping our roots in, in games development and uh, doing uh, work on with other indie studios and uh, porting games and working on internal titles wherever we can. Did I miss anything there, John? Uh, well, I was just going to say we've been through a lot of the raft of what the university has to offer in terms of things like their enterprise placement scheme. We've been to the, the Game Republic events that you'll have just seen if you've been watching the stream for very long uh, and Transfuser and things like that. So we've, we've really managed to experience the whole gamut of um, everything the university tends to offer at the moment. Cool. So let's, uh, let's move on to our, oh, we've got the little Flux 8 slide. Um, oh, so should we should we say what the game Flux 8 is? I was is? just going to do that. To say, <laughs> this is a good time to introduce the game and what is Flux 8. So should we let Matt do that as he was one of the original developers? Matt, do you want to tell us what is Flux 8? Yeah, uh, easiest way to ever describe it is it's a puzzle game with two magnets, each with uh, their own priority. Um, and then there's also magnet elements within the actual levels where you have to interact with um, to either move or to move yourself to get to A to B. Um, that can involve switches, actual like magnetic balls, magnetic pads that you fly off of, um, and just even just simple jumping puzzles. Um, quite often just trying not to fall into the acid, which is everywhere. Um, but yeah, it, it's that simple. Um, 
it was just born off of a concept of me being stupid and trying to put a non non magnetic uh, board wipe on a um, on a board and it just falling down and kind of spiraled from there. <laughs> so that's quite an interesting little backstory about where the or the yeah. origins of the game idea came from. Is that it was some put something as simple as trying to put a, a a board wipe on a on a magnetic board that wasn't magnetic and you go in okay let's make a game out of this. <laughs> Um, At least the game wasn't trying to put a board rubber on a thing in VR. That would it might not have lasted quite so long. Yeah. So Flux 8 released on Steam originally, a couple of years ago now. Um, it's got a, a level editor in it. It's got uh, really good gameplay. I know Matt's played through it twice. I've only gone through it once. Um, and then the plan then was, well, how, uh, what can we do with it? I think, Matt, actually, you came to us first, didn't you, and said, how do you fancy porting this to Switch? Once you started okay. the Torchbearer, I think. Yeah, um, well, when I started there, we had one, so I was like, ooh, I wonder what I can do. Um, and honestly, since the Switch came out, the, 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 ironically, that they had a red and blue controller. Since day one, I was like, like we have a red and blue magnet, why can't we yeah. do something? Yeah. Um, we didn't have time whilst we were at Canal Side. Um, it was pretty rushed off our fleet, just getting the Steam version working and uh, out properly. So once final year was over, and we had some free time. I just thought, why can't we just make this a thing? Yeah, yeah. I'm just reading the uh, the comments on Twitch as well. But no, I think it's yeah. So it's really good from that point of view. Uh, so what have we got here? Um, what's this slide, Matt? Um, so top. Um, obviously, when you're making something for the Switch, it's not going to be one to one, especially since um, where Flux Eight was made in like. Unity 5, uh, maybe bordering on 4, um, and we're now in 2020. So just going from that shift, a lot quite changed. Um, on the uh, left is the old version of the shaders and the actual old shader uh, program that we used to use called Shader Forge, which is now basically gone. Um, and we had to modernize it to a new whole new shader program. Um, and there was so many little tweaks and differences we had to make, uh, mostly because of the lighting we put in Flux originally. Um, I can't remember who came up with the idea originally, but uh, they loved the like little Halo kind of style lighting, where it goes out in gradient, um, but it's like fixed gradient. Um, but it, it's quite a big shader job, especially when you don't want to lose the color and the pop from the actual elements that are already there. Mm. Um, so, what, so, what's it? What's it like? I mean, obviously, um, a switch isn't quite a, running a twenty eighty <laughs> graphics card, so the, the shaders would have been a challenge trying to make them work. Can you tell us a little bit about the shader challenges? Yeah, so um, so the original shader we had um, because it was just deprecated, they wouldn't even compile for the switch. Um, basically, I uh, we had to move over just to get it to work. Um, we couldn't use the old shaders even if we wanted to. Um, and then on top of that, this obviously was originally built for PC and uh, we had a lot more horsepower, um, with a portable console, you don't want to be constantly maxing it out. You want to have the full FPS, but you don't want to be hundred percent nicks, then you'll just kill your battery instantly. Um, so a lot of the optimization wasn't done Flux 8 cause it's a rather basic game. Um, so simple stuff like just making Stack, uh, stack object stack on the render pipeline. Um, basically, Unity have um, render batches, and I think the original count for just this level was in the six thousands, which is quite bad. Um, but it was on PC, so you didn't care. And yeah. um, whereas on the Switch, you for any level to run at above sixty FPS, it has to be below the thousands. Um, so some stuff had to be stripped out, such as processing. We were doing a lot of uh, color correction um, with Flux. So it, like you can see, there's a, there's, the uh, acid is actually a bit more yellow on the new version. And that's because the color correction was actually compensating for that. Um, so a lot of the processing had to go. Um, but then uh, stuff like the um, sky sh uh, light shafts in the background, that was using depth map and the camera's uh, position and doing it all live, whereas on the Switch, there's not enough oomph to do that. 
Um, so we end up uh, switching to a plain renderer where we just basically give it an area, say, chuck some planes there, and using particle effects to generate the light shafts. Okay. I think uh, we'll, we'll ask some more questions as we go along. I was just going to um, let everyone know, I think this is a good time, actually. We mentioned that it's that Flux 8 is coming on Switch, but we haven't said when. <laughs> so Pete and John, when when can we when can we purchase this game? Yeah, so Flux 8 is coming to Switch on the 29th of this month, which is the Friday. Uh, Two you can pre-order it now, so you can go to the store pages. It's um, available in um, Americas as well as Europe. So if you haven't got any friends overseas, you can recommend it to them. And, and um, it's... should we should we mention the competition? I mean, we'll mention it again at the end, so people know that that is a yeah. thing. We're, we're also going to we should tell everyone that we are going to play the game in a minute on Switch and compare it to PC as well. But to, uh, do you want to mention the competition? Yes, yes, sure. So, I mean, if you want to tweet us now at um, hashtag uh, Fluxate with a magnet-related pun, uh, we will be selecting a few of them to give out keys to the game when it releases on the 29th. So make sure you uh, get some puns out for us. John is a connoisseur of puns as well, so he'll be I'll appreciate an eye of all of them. Yeah, okay. certainly. So that, was, of them that was hashtag Flux8 Game. Yeah. Do you want to put that in the uh, whoever's somebody's writing in yeah. the chat? Is that you, Matt? Yeah, that is okay. Yes, yeah, you'll put that, and then so yeah, uh, magnet-related puns uh, and best one wins on the 29th, and then we'll um, make sure your Twitter is uh, uh, we can find you, <laughs> so that we can between us all we can send you the key. <laughs> if you're called an obscure name and there's no email address, we'll uh, we'll struggle. So make sure we can find you. Cool. So, so, so just. Tweet out or yeah, the hashtag flux eight game with your best magnet related pun and uh Pete and John will uh, send you uh, some switch keys. Cool. Or a switch key. A switch key, yeah. <laughs> so uh shall we what's the next slide? Oh that's the end one, isn't it? So we should actually I think go to um, not that one. That one and we're gonna try. Let's see if this works. Um luckily for all our watchers you won't have to look at me anymore because I'm gonna change my um, input to my switch so let's give this a try and see if uh, see if everything just dies okay. so we're, we're trying to do a little comparison so on my little my window on the right um, we're gonna have the PC version running um, and uh, Duke's going to hook up the hey. switch version so we can see a little bit of the direct comparison between some of the changes that uh, Torchbearer had to make to actually get this to work. And so, oh, there we go. He's got his switch, switch go, switch live. There we go. I have, but also, but my, uh, I'm not sending any signal, so I'm just going to reactivate that. Oh, there we go. I'm in. Um, just on a quick note, whilst you're here, uh, one of the weirder uh, bugs that I had to fix here was the main menu. Um, initially, on the uh, switch version, it took a whole minute for the main menu to load. Um, and after doing some digging, it turned out that uh, the main problem was uh, we initialized all the music audio that plays in the background for the levels. So each set of levels, the red, um, the blue, and the co-op have their own set of music. Um, but we initialized that in the main menu. And one of the main problems we had was that um, when it tried to load the main menu, it was trying to load every single piece of audio we ever had. <laughs> um, <Okay>. So <laughs> that was... Uh, Turns out that was never caught on because we had SSDs and a decent amount of RAM, so you just never saw it. Uh, but as soon as you put it, try and put it on flash memory, you go, oh, yeah, that's a problem. Okay. So I've not played many levels yet on this uh, Switch version. So should we start with the intro level and we can just watch? Because there's yeah. a little bit to watch there, isn't there? Um, so let's start. So it's red so bit, level one. You look Whoops. behind me on the. Yeah, sorry, I didn't feed. actually press it. <laughs> I, was waiting, I was waiting for for you to press the button, and then yours was already loading, so I'm a little bit behind. So well, straight away, you can see, you can see a little, quite a bit of a, a color difference between the two, uh, and I presume that's coming from that post process that you were saying just couldn't run on the switch. Yeah, um, it was a full screen color correction, so that would basically double the render time because it was having to change every single pixel. Um, you got it as close as possible, but um, 
in the end, like there's a limited factor of what you can do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think also on the PC we we'll, like have vignette and um, a bit of bokeh on all of it, so that all had to be removed because it realistically it it makes it look a bit nicer, but for it doesn't really affect gameplay. Can I just say, um, for those watching on Twitch and YouTube, don't worry about the resolution. I think there's a quite a lot of compression coming through from Matt's version. Yes. For some reason, so, it, doesn't, so... it doesn't look... It's not The, the difference is the one on the left, the, the Switch version, is pin sharp because it's, it's straight into my machine, whereas Matt's is being compressed and then sent. So it doesn't. there isn't this difference in sharpness normally. That's just... A, yes, yeah. So the one on the right, the one on the right is running through Zoom as a, as a yeah. camera. So it's basically compressing it as if it was a webcam. Yeah. Um, but and the, there might be some input delay, which as it isn't actually there on um, the actual game. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to mention it that for, we're looking more at color and shaders, I think, rather than the sharpness on this. Yeah. So if we go through to the first. The so first uh, before level. you go through to oh, the first oh, level, I want to see if is the secret area back. still there. I can't get back. Um, <laughs> oh. So if you if you if you go to the left, Hang on. on the original well, game, you jump over. You'll yeah. have to you'll have to download it and find out. Yeah. yeah See, there know. was a there was a little secret area that basically it was uh, a nod to the other games that were made at Canal Side. I yeah, think so. you had to strip that out because the oh what was well, I think it was actually the planet surprisingly enough. Um, the because wall. That, um, no, the planet behind you. I think oh, I had to yeah. strip that out just because of the amount of poles it had. Um, so none of that is textured. It's all flat colours. Oh yeah, it wasn't because it was it was it was ripped directly from Pocket Galaxy. Exactly. So I believe that had to go just because the amount of render calls it was calling. Surprisingly. Um, Here we go. I'm about to find out. I, I know Pete right. said right to find out, but I'm I'm dying to find out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the planet is gone. Or the, the big one. Yep. Um, surprise. Yeah, but surprise. It surprised me. I thought it was the um, hovercraft, but just because of how many colours it is. Yeah. Uh, but no, it was. Um, Planet just because of how many materials it had. Okay, so let's let's so, get back into that first level. So like like I said, there's some nice little nods there to Hover Havoc and Pocket Galaxy and Yoho Kablamo and things like that. Just on, just on the left. Uh, for anyone that isn't um, doesn't know what Canal Side is, it doesn't really make sense, but it's a nice little uh, Easter egg for those that do. So I think the first place to stop, Matt, is these um, these light shafts and the the foreground uh, lighting is obviously quite different. So. Matt, do you want to? Is there anything you can tell us about that? The, um, light, the yeah. lightning looks the same. The the lighting's the same. Yeah, it, it's it's a bit uh, brighter on the Switch version once again because post processing. Um, quite a bit of the fog's been removed, um, um, and because the light shaft we're using a normal map and then adding onto the fog, it looks quite different. Um, but if you still move around on the Switch version, um, it does change because it's using particles. Um, so it's actually quite, it's many, many planes mm. on top of each other and they're additive, additive to each other. So it's a really nice way of, to get like a, a movement effect to the light shafts, even though there's nothing really happening, it's all static. Yeah. And uh, if I remember correctly, the lights are dynamic lights. So are they still dynamic in the, the switch port? Yep. Um, I don't actually think they have. Oh, yeah, they do have lights. Some of them don't, some yeah. of them do. Um, but yeah, um, that was just a nice nod. We thought, well, we had people keep hitting them, and you just kind of stopped, and it was like, well, just make them a spring. Cool. Okay, so I think and there's something different with the water um, as well. You, you said before it's, it's yellower, but also I think it, is it's the... I'm trying to watch yours, Matt. It's slower, isn't it? Is that right? Uh, yeah, that looks like the animation speed of the shader is quicker on the switch pot, so... <laughs> I was just uh, a porting difference. Yeah, I'm guessing this is having to port it over to a new assist, new system. Mm. Yeah. It's just trying to get those values the same is is extremely difficult. So I've jumped on to the next level now. So cool. uh, I guess um, this will be interesting to see the... Um, how, how did you get... With the magnet, you know, the impact of the magnet, how, how much force is applied, did you mm-hmm. have to change anything there, or was it is it all... It's the same? Uh, no, so because we're using just base unity physics... Mm. Um, we didn't have to really change anything with that because that was all handled. Um, the one thing that we did have to change, if you just go back a second yeah. uh, to the little monitor, um, was the readability of some stuff. So I think if you just go back to the uh, bit further, Duke. Yeah. Up with the text. It's the, if you go to the next. Oh, no. 
go if you go to the next monitor you'll be able to see what Matt's talking about all right next one on oh I yeah. see sorry right I'm with you yeah so it says uh red fields will repel yeah mm -hmm. sorry if you stand in front of it, it should be it should show yep it's not uh, it, no, it only shows once so uh, uh yeah. did I go past it too fast so once you've gone past it it doesn't it, it doesn't show again oh I've noticed okay. that but, yeah, read, it, is that the one where it reads across the bottom is that right? yeah. yeah so, so we had to add text on the bottom of the um screen there just, is there you go um yeah like you can't like if you're on a switch and you're on two player you can't read the screens um mm. there's not enough resolution there um pc it's fine because you've got a full monitor in front of you um but that was one of just nice uh changes we, we made just because like some of the screens have vital information especially when you get to the multiplayer of how to play the game um whereas on switch you just couldn't read it so that was one of the small changes we had to make. That makes sense. I mean, the, the native is the native res seven twenty on a switch. Uh, so when, when you're playing it handheld, it's seven twenty. Yeah. Uh, when you're playing it on TV, it's ten eighty. Yeah. So um, I imagine, as you say, multiplayer on seven twenty on a seven inch screen, is it? It's going to be. Yeah. yeah, I could imagine the reverse. It's definitely playable, um, but you just lose. You can't see the depth of the uh, text, especially when the screens are far in the background. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, it's definitely as you say. It's definitely. I've been. I, I have been playing it on. Uh, on the normal on the normal switch uh, away from the tv and i've had no problems with the playability but i could imagine what you're saying about the text being a problem so that's good uh, so we got a, a question from ash on the chat that says um what was your most enjoyable moment port in the game uh, enjoyable Whew. yeah <laughs> uh when it loaded <laughs> uh, no uh realistically it was um when um when i was able to play through from the level editor um that system was not built to go to live initially it was built as a dev tool just for us uh, just so we could pump out levels real quick um but just because of jonathan's work who was another person at canal side who mostly did the level it, uh, it was in a pretty good state when it when we finished with it so we decided to put it into the game um and it, it, it's very functional but um on the switch you don't have a master keyboard it's either touch input or input via a controller um and it wasn't designed for that it was designed for making levels for us uh, so a lot of modification had to happen in the code just to go well what happens if you try and place a magnet and you're doing it on controller instead of placing it with the touch screen um, and there was quite a lot of heavy logic, but once all that worked and you could place every item, it was actually uh, a really good feeling. For for me, it was actually being able to, um, once we got the controls in, even before it was all polished and, and some frame rates were low, it was actually being able to sit down and play it co-op. I just think the Switch is awesome for that, having a controller each and, and playing it. So that was really cool. Yeah, well, I think for me, it was really seeing the star preview for the first time, because it, it actually suddenly became something that was actually going to be publicly available. And as so our first title as a publisher, it felt like quite a milestone for me. Cool. Cool. Um, as, as we're sat here on this screen, there is one thing that I, I, I do notice, which I'm going to guess was uh, an optimization thing, is that as the little characters are running around in the background, mm -hmm. um, they're casting dynamic shadows and uh, dynamic lights. I'm guessing on the Switch version, you had to reduce the amount of dynamic lights quite drastically. Uh, uh, yes, that's the same question. <laughs> uh, that is that is actually the light shaft system. So that's using the depth map um, to calculate all that. Whereas it's a static object in Switch just to optimize the render calls, um, so you can't interact with it. Um, we could have done that in some areas, um, but it's easier just to do a blanket like this is how the system works then putting loads of little systems into stuff like this. I think there's on this is the only instance where it's like <coughs> excuse me, right in your face that they're, that they're actually interacting with the light shafts. Um, in, in the, I'm just looking in the chat, some more questions coming in. Um people want to know about the level editor. Uh, and do you have any ways to ensure that a player made level is actually playable? Uh yes, you have to uh, like the Mario system, you have to complete the level uh before you can uh, well on the steam version you get to play it before you can publish it basically um there is uh, a few checks like we we check 
have you got a magnet in there? Have you got a door that you can exit? Uh, the basic stuff. Um, for those switches, so um, we don't do the hardcore checks have you completed the level, basically. Um, because you can't, at the moment, you can't publish it. It's only on your own channel switch. But there is, uh, we would like to potentially look at doing uh, level sharing in the future. Um, the, the, the cool thing about level editor as well, you can jump in and test the level as you're going, so you can see what it'll play like before you save it. Um, I'm, just, I'm just just distracted by it. Are you, are you, are you, you're actually moving ahead. Sorry, <laughs> not intentionally. I was coming back now. Uh, so actually, I'm just going to quickly talk about the gameplay mechanics here because it's it, at first glance, when you're just watching someone play, it, feel, it just looks like it's a normal platformer. But the this simple section here where you just have to move up this shaft, you have to constantly turn your magnet on and off because if you're fully on, you just get thrown into the, uh, the waist on the right. Um, but so as you're going up the shaft, you have to go on, off, on, off, and try and get yourself up this. It's actually really quite tricky. Oh, you make it look hard, man. I know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm equally making it look hard. Today. There we go. There we go. So it's actually a, a really fun mechanic um, of a, a little, like something as simple as turning a magnet on and off. Can actually lead itself to a huge variety of different gameplay scenarios. Uh, so this section here is that if you're touching the blue, it pulls towards you. Uh, so you can actually turn yourself on just to move this platform enough to actually jump up and out onto the next level. So Duke's yeah. making that bit look hard, whereas I made it look easy. Um, <laughs> I'm doing that intentionally. <laughs> okay, so I, should, I think I should stop playing Twitch because it clearly goes very wrong for me. Uh, to be fair to you, this is um, in every play test we ever had done. This is the that is the level that breaks people. Um, yeah, really. I've done um, it. I've done it on PC. I just I was just struggling on Switch, honest. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's um, to add on to Matt's thing. We also you also have full air control. Um, we don't limit you on how you can control a magnet while you're in the air. Um, that's mostly because in the later levels, it becomes a key point. Um, you can push against a magnetic force that is pushing you. Um, and that adds a lot more um, possible game mechanics. Cool. We didn't mention the names of them before. You just slipped it in there. I don't think I did. I don't think you mentioned. Did you did not just say Newt? No. Oh, no, but yeah. They... Say Newt. Uh, <laughs> I think you did, Duke, but I do like the names of the Duke. It is um, Newt and uh, Tez. Is it? Yeah. Tez. So, so from Tesla and uh, Newton. Um, and I do love the voiced by, um, wasn't it Ruben that voiced them? Yeah, it was uh, Ruben uh, method acting in the studio with um, just doing weird, like the raws are just so funny. It's just weird sounds. Um, and then all the like impact sounds that the magnet makes is um, I just had why is his name's gone totally out of my head? I'm sorry, your name's gone totally out of my head. Uh, is it Luke, Luke, sorry, yes, thank yeah, you. They, uh, I, was, I was like, I was like, who are you meaning? But yeah, Luke, um, Luke uh, a lot of the impact sounds are when you like if you slam into a wall, you make a, uh, a ting or a tong, um, is Luke's bashing spoons together. In a music studio, um, and then adding lots of reverb and doing nice magical audio things to them. This is the first level we come across the blue uh, magnet rather than oh, the red. Are, are, oh, are you, on, are, you on, are you on the blue bit? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I was just wanted to get to the blue one where we can see the. So the red one has, has been the repulsor, as it were, pushing me away. And this level is the first one where we see the blue attractor. And of course, when we get to multiplayer and it's red and blue, then. Um, one is repulsing and one is uh, attracting. And I think yeah, the, I, the first oh, one you see, I don't know if you, you won't be able to see it on my screen. Oh, oh, there, don't don't let negativity pull you down. <laughs> <laughs> but you will find many of them. Um, well, I think every every single person in the team put a pun somewhere in it or some sort of meme. Um, they're, they're all over the place. Uh, there's a question in here from Ash actually saying, are all levels ported exactly the same or have you implemented any design changes based on the data from anal analyzing the PC gameplay or uh, um, the experience of it? 
no, so uh, from a data side, it's all the same. Um, it's totally custom. So we're not actually, other than it, it's not formatted in any standard format. It's something that Jonathan came up with uh, just to reduce the size of the files. I think originally um, levels were generating like 10, 20 meg files. Um, and Jonathan came up with like this dictionary idea um, that reduced it down to a few kilobytes uh, for most levels. Cool. Um, but from a switch, from a PC, the if not identical, basically identical. The the only change we did have to make on some levels was to do with camera positioning and how that moves around, wasn't it, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's that's just playability, uh, the amount it zooms out and where it pans to. So there was some doing and throwing on that during play testing on, on exactly how we make the levels still readable and nav navigatable mm -hmm. uh, with the cameras. Cool. So, every, so if you've played this on PC, if you're on the Steam version and you remember all the levels, you should be able mm -hmm. to get through the whole thing. Although, obviously, I was making a few mistakes, but <laughs> you should be able to get through um, relatively easily. Uh, another question there that says, uh, are there any Switch exclusive features or was it near enough a direct port? Um, uh, the only thing that I think really changed was to do with optimization. So obviously how it looks. Uh, the light shafts and um, I added a so there's a few quality modes in there just for the switch so obviously on PC it was your general like high, low, enable this, disable that um, on switch um, I think we've got um, like a beautiful a performance and a battery saver um, basically the beautiful runs at 30 FPS um, has AO enabled um, and the reason we limit to 30 FPS on that mode is just to keep it, uh, the frame rate consistent. Otherwise, we'd have some spikes, um, which makes the gameplay feel a bit odd. Um, the performance disables AO, but then it gives you the full 60 FPS of the switch. And the battery saver just um, limits it to 30, but doesn't enable AO. And um, it lets the switch run a bit longer playing the game. Have you done the tests on that? What's the, what's the actual um, savings that you get from running? Um, with no AL. Um, from an FPS <coughs> from an FPS perspective, um, some levels with AO would dip to um, twenty five. So it was basically utilizing the whole of a switch. Um, without it, um, every level runs at a solid sixty um, without any problems. So I haven't run any tests to see how long much longer the battery life would actually last running at thirty. Um, but it's just under assumption that it's utilizing the switch um, less than it needs to. Okay, so you, you're going to get some some potential gain there from that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, Ash, another one, uh, Ash would like uh, a Joy-Con costume for each magnet as a switch bonus. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like that actually, that would be cool. Yeah. Would we, be great. Maybe I a phone update. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to get a design to do it for me. Um, <laughs> Basically, um, I think I had a concept somewhere as well where you basically, um, depending on which magnet you'd give it to, would give it the Pacific, that that, that version of the Joy-Con. Um, but we just never got around to it. Yeah, we'd, we'd, uh, so the, the main goal behind this port was to open it up to a new audience, get it on the Switch, get it portable. Uh, but we, like I say, um, we'd love to support this into the future. And... Um, Add additional levels, add more costumes, add um, add other features potentially in the future. So it's it's by no means off the table. Cool. Yeah, the uh, the best thing about this is there is content unused content still uh, waiting. Um, the problem is doing no levels for it. Um, that was one of the big um, problems at the end of the development. We we didn't run out of time and couldn't develop more levels um, and add more mechanics. Um, so there's a whole um, <coughs> lava theme um, ready to go. Uh, it was never utilized, and uh, there is some assets for uh, like a nice level, but they were just never utilized either. Just to clarify as well, Matt's, uh, Matt's referencing the PC version there, but uh, there's no reason that couldn't be ported to Switch. So. Yeah. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm playing through the uh, chase section now of uh, this level, which is uh, surprisingly hard when you're being chased by 
flowing lava. I, yeah. I love these chase levels. There's uh, there's a few of them and they're, they're good fun. I think I've yeah. proven many times that I'm bad enough at platformers without trying this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think this is this is the level where you're introduced to the blue character as well, Tess. Yep. You can see going up on the lift. So I, I don't think we mentioned either, but the floppy disks for those who haven't played the PC version, they get you uh, little collectibles and things you can wear. So like you can see the rubber duck uh, on the right hand screen. Now that's uh, you get all little things you can customize the characters with through the floppy disks, which you talked about. Cool. Okay, so um, I'm going to switch back to my view, uh, Matt. Unless uh, yeah, so no, no, I yeah. Switch back. I'm going to see if this if this works. Try and revert back to my camera. Let's see if it explodes. Oh, something exploded. <laughs> Look at that. I don't know what that is. Let's try and... Uh, that's mean. I look like I'm in, uh, gone to warp there, don't I? Let's see that. Can we do that again? Yay! Okay, that, that wasn't quite the disaster I was expecting, but switching backwards and forwards. Um, so, is there anything else you guys want to add? I th I've run out of questions. I think I'm, I'm keeping an eye yeah, on I think, that. But... I think for, from our perspective, mine and Duke's, it's really... The studios are an, an amazing opportunity for students. And in the last stream, we were just talking about the, the students were saying how um, Game Republic, when um, being in the studio, helped them to actually learn teamworking and, and all the different skills that they need to actually go into industry. Um, but one thing that tends to happen with those games that get made is that they get pushed out on Steam or to, to iOS and Android. And the students move on to the next thing and the next next project. So it's it's amazing to see games that are really fun to play getting second lease of life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, no, uh, I think it's, it's really this is the first time that's that's happened, and it's extremely exciting to see for me. I mean, the game was great and is great on Switch. That's on Steam, um, but then to see a port of that, uh, and also to be in, for grads to be part of that process. I mean, Matt as an original developer, but Pete and John running their own business uh, and being able to engage with us on that has been um, really great, I think. Yeah, the whole, the whole thing's been fantastic. It's been a joy to work on the project and we, we love working with the university um, for many reasons, having been graduates ourselves and, and knowing you guys quite well. It's, uh, yeah, the whole process has been great. It's, um, it's a fantastic game to play, like you say, on Steam. And I think it lends itself to Switch maybe even more in some ways, uh, just with the the way it feels and the controls and the fact you can dip in and do little puzzles on the go. Um, yeah, it's a really, really great game. Yeah. Cool. And I, th I think it's uh, it's one of those games that has come out of the studio that, like I say, I've played it through on the PC version several times already. It's a, it's a really fun little puzzler. Um, being able to just take that simple core mechanic of turning on and off a, a magnet um, and how it either repels or retracts and then putting an entire platformer puzzle around that. Um, you guys managed to come up with some really interesting um, uh, scenarios that you could use those. And, and when you introduced the second character, we didn't, like during our playthrough there, we didn't actually get to the second character. Uh, but once you introduce that second character and then they're interacting um, and they're, they're, you're using them to like repel off each other and things like that, it, it becomes a really cool, interesting game. Uh, and I hope, I really do hope that more people get to experience it and it does it does really well on Switch. Uh, we'd, we'd love to use this as a platform to continue supporting the game, like you say. So really hope that people do enjoy it. I think just... Go on, sorry. Go on, Matt. Uh, just to add on to Matt's stuff, um, like most of... When, when to, to enjoy the game, most of the stuff out like that was just done as, well, what, what if we do this? Just, just random, just like random ideas. See how they work. Implement them. If they don't work, well, bin them. It, 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 that's kind of the mindset you've got to have with games. Is if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Or, or, or if you can't make it work, um, but if you just come up with like small, silly ideas, and they can grow into like a whole, well, technically a whole game. Yeah, I think I think, I think that's a really good lesson for all. Um game developers to learn from all students especially is that not every idea you have is going to be gold and every every piece of art that you make will be perfect you you need to iterate you need to uh for for gameplay mechanics especially do a do a little test 
build build it out, see if it's fun, and if it's not, scrap it, move on to the next one. Um, I agree. I think sometimes people can be very precious over their ideas, and to them, it's the best idea ever. And and being able to take criticism uh, on board and learn from that and understand and, and not be precious and just think actually, you know what, it's not working. I think that's a key skill, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's too, it's too easy to get lost in your own idea. You know, it's the best idea ever invented. <laughs> But if it's not working at some point, you have to you have to step back and realise that there's changes needed. Uh, before we wrap up, I just wanted to mention the competition again because we mentioned it near the beginning. But uh, for anyone joining late, to um, to uh, a Twitter, we, are you opening it to Instagram or just Twitter? I believe just Twitter. Twitter. So we've got a, it's a Twitter competition. So um, a, po a tweet with the hashtag Flux Eight Game, your best magnet related pun. Uh, and then on hopefully by Friday, John and Pete can pick their favourite, uh, and then there'll be one or two keys out, up for for uh, as a prize. So that on uh, on Friday, actually, you could download uh, and play just as I was on my Switch. Yep. Is there anything else anybody wants to add before we wrap up? Uh, I'll just add one thing. If you are struggling, look at the canal side Twitter. There'll be plenty. If you go back, uh, go back a bit. Oh, yeah. There'll be plenty <laughs> of uh, magnet-based ones. No oh, we, yeah, we definitely can't have some plagiarism, though, can we? Yeah. Just for inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> yeah inspiration. Yeah. yeah, original puns only. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, thank you again, Torchbearer, for joining us. And thank you for working on it, because, you know, I think you've done a fantastic job in porting what was a great game in the first place. And it's it's ported extremely well. It plays fantastic on a Switch. Um, so I think, yeah, many, many congratulations on success. And just to add to that, I, I think it can't just be all those. I believe the original team, mm. um, I know I'm serious about it myself a bit, but the original team, not just me, uh, did a great job on it. Um, like it wasn't just a mess, it was actually coded pretty well. Um, so that made it possible for us to actually do this um, in a pretty small time scale. Yeah, yes, it, was yeah. A, it was a pleasure to port. And the, as Matt says, the only real things we had to contend with was performance. And it, it wasn't, uh, it was a good code base to work from, certainly. I think I think that says a lot about the quality of uh, not only the students coming in, but in uh, a placement year. So between their second year and final year, they're coding a game clean enough that that you can port it later on. Um, that's really important when you're developing is that your code is clean, readable, and understandable by someone else that can come along. Students, some students um, forget the fact that code isn't just for you. Uh, and so you can't just uh, hack it together and hope that it'll work. And mm. um, there is a chance that someone will be coming along later on to read that code and potentially port it. So they need to know what's going on. Yeah. That's and, it. Yeah. It's always nice when you someone works in some rude comments as well for us to find <laughs> in the code. <laughs> there are a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll wrap up there. Uh, as I say, thanks again. And, um, oh, we'll thank run you. the outro. Yeah, thank you a lot. Thanks a lot.